this is round three of Mansions of Madness. So we've got our investigators scattered around the mansion. I have tried to consolidate some of them. Neen is way down here in an office, which turned out to be a, a bad lead. I thought that this was the office where the key was being hidden, according to the unhelpful butler. But it turns out that that wasn't the office, it's a different office. It's a hidden office behind the library, and that's where Rita and Charlie have made their way. They need to investigate a couple of leads here, including a bookshelf that has that they that they witnessed being sort of closed uh, as someone emerged. Carson is way over here, just hanging out at the end of the hall. There's a locked door at the end of the hallway, so I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with him yet. I do know that I need Rita to open this door, or to open this bookcase. So I'm going to switch over to the app. Here we are in the app view. So Rita is way up here in the library. Uh, the, the clue token there on the right, on the east side, is um, another desk with more papers on it. Getting tired of looking through papers, to be honest. So I think I'll just have her click on here to see what's up with this bookshelf. Peering behind the bookshelf, the robed figure was moving. Uh, the robed figure is has since uh, passed away. He got torn to, sh torn to shreds by a deep one. Uh, you see runic circles inscribed on the wall. Search. You push aside the shelf to reveal the ritual circles the butler spoke of. You attempt to trace them as he told you. Tap to attempt the puzzle using lore. Rita's not great at lore. She's got three. It's better than I thought, actually. I thought she was at two. And anyway, I've actually done this before, this puzzle. Um, I can probably remember how to do it. So I, I guess, yeah, look away if you don't want spoilers. If you want to try to solve this sometime yourself, you might... You might not want to see this being done. There is a secret to solving that puzzle, uh, but I won't tell it to you right now because I don't want you to be spoiled if you don't want to be. You trace a continuous line through the winding markings as the butler instructed you. The runes illu- I don't remember the butler ever saying that, by the way. The runes illuminate with a strange green light, and a wall panel pops open, revealing a secret door to a hidden study behind the wall. Gain one clue token. That's good, because Rita has no clue tokens right now. I think- I think- who is it? Charlie or me? Yeah, Charlie has like four clue tokens and Rita has zero, but now she has one. Gain one clue token and place a door token as indicated, then discard this search token. Oh, interesting. So we don't get to move into the door, into the room for free. Oh, maybe we do. Okay, so let's pause on this and set up the the, the map. Oh, I, I have to see what the map is. The secret panel in the wall slides open noiselessly, and you peer into a hidden office, place the study tile, and a wall, as indicated. And as as usual, I can't see what they're talking about, because this this thing is in my way, but what they're actually saying is that there's a door back here somewhere that I need to cover up with a wall. Looks like I'm meant to put this here. And then just to indicate that this door actually does connect to this room, they are instructing me to put a door token there, or a door, a door, um, a door tile there. So I will do that. Just like that. So there is a door there now. And uh, it's said to put a wall somewhere, so I'm assuming the wall is here where the door isn't meant to connect to this uh, this bedroom. So I should grab a door, uh, a, a wall uh, tile, and obscure that. Doesn't matter what I obscure it with, I don't think. So there's like a little, I don't know, looks like a tea, a china cabinet or something. Let's see what else we're supposed to do, or what else we're finding. A bookshelf 
filled with frightening objects is mounted on the opposite wall. Place a search token, as indicated. An oak desk sits on the other side of the room. Place a search token, as indicated. I'm gonna guess that if there's a key, it's in that desk. You may now move one space into the unexplored area. And yes, I think I will do that. Thanks. So Rita's in the hidden office, the hidden study now. And according to that, so she used one action to do the puzzle. And uh, as a reward for her success, she got to move for free. So she still only used one movement, uh, one, one action rather. I think what I might do to optimize moves is have her search the trinkets and have Charlie Kane move in and search the desk because he has the movement to spend on that if she moves over then that's the end of her turn she doesn't get the search if he moves in then he has one more action remaining to search but since i'm on her right now i'll search this um this token the shelf or this uh this shelf is lined with curiosities from the mundane to the horrifying as you scan over the various uh, items, your eyes fall on an urn marked Lilith Vanderbilt, 1856 through 1925. You pick up the urn and find it filled with ashes. Hmm. Smash the urn or leave the... I think I'm going to... Why would I smash the urn? <laughs> I'm not going to smash the urn. So that was kind of a waste, I'm afraid. Kind of a, felt like a wasted movement or action, rather. But that's that's okay. So she, that's two two actions for her. Now Charlie gets to take an action, so he'll move in two spaces, and then he will search this desk because, well, at this point, that's all that's left. If the key to the attic isn't here, I don't know where it is. Of course, I don't know where the attic is either. The oak desk has been kept in good condition. A number of papers and books are neatly stored on the desk's surface. Search. On the desk, you find what looks like a personal planner as you pick up the book, a brass key. What did I tell you? Remember in the episode where I found the bra a door with a brass doorknob and it was locked? The, the key always matches the doorknob. As you pick up the book, a brass key clatters from between the pages. You turn to the page it had been holding and find a note scrawled there. If the alignment truly weakens the veil, I believe that it is the only moment we have to break through. I will make the necessary preparations in the attic. Gain the brass key and incriminating evidence unique items. So this doesn't suggest to me that Mr. Vanderbilt has been kidnapped, first of all. It suggests to me, because I mean, that's his secret office with a note stored in probably his planner, because he was a bachelor. Lilith Vanderbilt, I believe, is his mother. Unless I'm getting confused, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what what I've determined. And so this is his study. He's he's doing a ritual, it sounds like. Does not sound like he's been kidnapped and stuffed into an attic to me. Sounds like he is um, very much involved in this, willingly. It also tells me, uh, or it suggests to me, that the attic is exactly over here, where uh, Carson is because the attic, or, or rather, I think that's literally the only door left, the only visible door left, and it's a brass key. There's the brass key, along with a note about the attic. It just feels like there's a little bit of synergy happening there. So I think, I think that's what's happening. But before we get ahead of ourselves, I need to grab the incriminating evidence, or nope, the brass key unique item. So Charlie has that. And then the the conclusive or incriminating? Incriminating evidence. There it is. You thought the man seemed suspicious, but here is the proof. Great. That's great. All right, so we have things that we need. They're sort of done, Rita and Charlie. Their, their turns have been taken. Carson hasn't done anything, but he can't really do anything. I mean, if you think about it, they... Um, he can't get into that, you know, like the brass key needs to come over here before he really can do anything useful. What I am going to do 
but before I figure out what to do with Carson there is I'm going to move Mean. She obviously needs to come up here to join the rest of the party. So one, two, one, um, oops, that's not really a door. So yeah, that's the smart move for her. So she is, she's within range now. I mean, she, or she's in, she's in the right general area she's just like what one one move away from what whatever the attic or, or stairs leading to the attic whatever's behind that door i'm hoping this is the door that i'm thinking it is so what is carson gonna do that's the question i mean he could move up here and search the bedroom there's no reason to there's no real reason not to and I don't love the idea of just wasting a turn. He could also move here and search the phone book. Okay, so I'm going to roll the dice for this. Um, success, I'll go north. Clue, I'll go south. <laughs> nothing. Um, nothing again. There we go, success. Okay, so he's going north. So he goes one, two, and then he searches this token. Oh, I wasn't done... Charlie's not done searching. You place the planner back onto the desk and search through the drawers. You find some things of use, but no additional evidence. Gain the riot whistle common item. Okay, never had this. I don't think. I don't remember having a riot whistle before. That's kind of... I wonder what it does. Once per round, you or another investigator within range may re-roll any number of dice while evading a monster. Okay. That could be good. Um, really, really powerful monsters. You cannot attack. I mean, you can, but you'll you'll never you'll never win. So evading is a usually a, a very good option, or is sometimes a very good option. I mean, they, they chase you, so it, it it's only it's only as good as it as as it is for the moment. But anyway, uh, then discard this search token. Right? Yes, I should do that. Discard that search token. And I'm, I guess I'm going to put Rita's search token more as an interact token. Because I know what's there. I don't know if I'll remember it, but it's an urn of ashes. Okay, so I think that's really, really Charlie's turn now. Yeah, it is. Okay, so now Carson has moved from this locked d uh, door, being in front of the locked door, over here to the bedroom. And he's going to search the, 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 the token that's in his space. A modest writing desk sits in the corner of the room, holding a massive tome that almost covers the entire surface, the, the desk's entire surface. Yeah, I'll search that. You pull a creaking wooden chair up to the desk and attempt to decipher the archaic scribblings from the tome's pages. Roll lore. Well, lore is Karsten's strong suit. Carson, Carson. Well, one of his strong suits. Actually, observation is his strongest. But lore is not too bad. So he's got one success and two clue icons. How many clue tokens does Carson have? He has two. But as I have said before, I don't like to spend clue tokens on things that aren't critical. But it's kind of late game at this point, I think, if I'm reading the the game board correctly. So I think I'm going to spend one token, one clue token. The gamble is, of course, that he might get a clue token from this. So it may be worth spending two clue tokens and getting one back. I don't know. Um, that's two successes. I, I don't know why I'm compelled to 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 spend this. You know what? I think... Wait a minute. Hold on. I think he has a spell. Yeah, Arcane Insight. You or another... It's an action to do it. You or another investigator within range gains a clue. Uh, you may discard this card to convert all clue tokens to successes. Oh, but while casting a spell. That's um, Candles. So he doesn't really have any abilities. Yeah, I think I'm just going to spin those and see what happens. I, th I think it's I think it's a mistake. 
As you slowly piece together the script, it reveals the directions to some vile ritual meant to summon beings from realms beyond reality, as well as instructions on the magics to contain them. Gain the arcane manuscript common item, and then discard the search token. Yeah, that was a waste. I mean, I don't know what the arcane um, manuscript common item is. First of all, it's a common item, so it's it's probably probably not that powerful, right? Uh, okay, arcane manuscript. Roll one additional die while resolving a lore test. And that is just an always-on thing. That could be good. If he can attack and eat someone with with his lore skill, that'll be really, really useful. It's not very common, though. It's not typical. Um, okay, so that's Karsten's turn. And I, yeah, I, I feel bad for violating my own rule about not spending clue tokens. I just really thought there was there might be something more to that than obviously there actually was. Oh well, live and learn, or or don't learn as the case may be. And I'll end the investigator phase, and now surely the mythos phase is going to throw something horrible at us. With so many drawers and cabinets, surely you will be able to find some evidence here. This mythos event affects the investigators in a bedroom or office with the lowest sanity. Okay, so a bedroom or office with the lowest sanity. I think that's going to be Rita. She has a sanity of five, just naturally. It's, it's She hasn't lost sanity, but that, that is her natural uh, sanity rating. You open drawers looking for clues. Instead, you find that the drawers are filled with bloody body parts. Observation, success of two. Okay, observation for Rita I think is actually pretty good. My, my, uh, it's a three. Not the worst. Could be better. Oh dear. Um, so she got one success and there's no, no helping that, unfortunately, because it's, uh, she doesn't have any ability to counter, to counteract that. And I think, yeah, so, so one success does cancel out one bad thing. So if you pass, you shake off the hallucination. If you fail, you stumble backwards in terror, suffer two horror. Well, two minus one is one horror, so she takes one horror card. The absolute terror card. You make a very small noise somewhere in the back of your throat. You find that you are weeping silently. Resolve immediately. Suffer one additional face down horror, then flip this card face down. Okay, so in other words, she now has two horror cards, but I only had to read and enact, you know, resolve one of them, which which I just did. She's got two two cards. She's only got five, so she's she if she loses three more sanity, then she does gain the insane condition. A robed figure appears from a secret door and began begins searching around. Upon seeing signs of other people, the figure yells, There is someone here! You f you hear a muffled response from another part of the estate. Get rid of them! Spawn a cultist as indicated. Alright. Well, no one is near that office right now, so that's fortunate. So he appears in the office through a, a secret door, apparently. I guess there's a door somewhere that's so secret even we don't know about it. Um, so he's pretty far away, and hopefully he'll stay that way, but I imagine he won't. Let's find out. The cultist moves up to two spaces to be in a space with as many investigators as possible, then attacks each investigator. Okay, let's see how far he can get. One, two. Well, that's as close as he can get to any uh, investigator, which isn't that far. I mean, he's pretty close to mean, to be perfectly honest. A little bit uncomfortably close. But obviously he can't attack from from there, so no effect. The cultist moves two spaces toward the nearest investigator. Okay, so that's a little bit sneaky. One, two. Now he's in the same space as Mean. That's not good. Or it could be. Uh, if he doesn't attack this round, then uh, she can attack him next. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the mo a monster within range with the highest horror rating. After all, 
uh, horror checks have been resolved, continue in the mythos phase. Okay, so there are some people within range of this monster. So first, um, the most obvious one will be mean. The cultist's wounds peel back, exposing rotting muscle and frail bone. Suffer one horror, but uh, willpower negates, and then flip one horror face up. Well, she doesn't have any horror yet, but she might get some. So let's see. Mean, I think her her brain power, her uh, willpower is, let's see, three. Yeah, it is three, but she's got a bunch of items including a lucky cigarette case, which I expended an entire turn getting. Once per round, you may convert a clue to a success. So that's pretty powerful. So she's got three willpower. She does not even need to bother. She got two successes. So she has zero horrors that she has to suffer. Now she's not the only one to have to do this though. Anyone within range so range is three squares so one two three carson is within range so carson needs to roll as well he's got a little bit surprisingly maybe only three willpower himself that does actually surprise me but he gets a success which cancels out one horror so he's okay and neither of them have horror so they can't flip a horror card face up and that's the end of the mythos phase. I have to say, this is the the most relaxed mythos phases I have ever experienced in this game. But I, I really do, bizarrely, I think that um, in the two-player uh, version, like if you play two players, you get much more active mythos phases. Whereas if you put four players, it's... It's a much more relaxed mythos phase. It's exactly the opposite of what is required. It, to the point that I, I'm convinced it's got, it, it must be a bug in the app. And, and certainly if I were game mastering this game as a human, I would, n I would, I would second guess the app uh, in the second, in the, in the two player version. But anyway, that's, that's this round. Everyone's gone. The investigators, the mythos phase, so next time, uh, I think we'll kill this cultist and then continue into what is hopefully, desperately hopefully, the attic. Thanks for watching.